Hey, this is Nicole Holland, and you are listening to the Business Building Rockstar Show, episode number 23. You're listening to the Business Building Rockstar Show, where your host, Nicole Holland, gets the lowdown from today's most talented, inspiring, and successful entrepreneurs on what it really takes to reach rockstar status. In today's episode, I'm hanging out with Kari Gaynor, a fellow Ontarian, and we're going to talk about what it takes to be a real entrepreneur. Kari shares what's the difference between learning and studying, why mastery is not always the right path to success, plus Kari's most important business tip. Thanks so much for listening. Here we go. Hey there, entrepreneur. Welcome to the Business Building Rockstar Show. I'm super excited to have with me here today, Kari Gaynor. He is a business consultant and strategist. He's been studying the art of business for over 20 years. He now helps businesses to mitigate their exposure to potential risks and to optimize marketing strategies in order to increase sales and grow businesses. And he is also fairly local to me, which is kind of fun. It's always nice to have a fellow Canuck, especially in Ontario, with me on the show. For sure. Are, are you ready to rock? Absolutely. Let's get into it. Fantastic. So give us a little bit more about what you do, how you serve, uh, how you help businesses. Great, great, great. Thanks for giving me this opportunity, Nicole. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to, to, to be here and to sort of share my take on business and entrepreneurship and, and, and my journey. Um, so what I do is I get into businesses. I help them when we, and I'm going to speak very plainly here. Maybe that's a little bit, uh, everyone gets that more. So what I do is when I say mitigate risk, it's really insurance. It's ensuring that businesses have the right protection that they need. But that's only one part of the puzzle. And my strategy, my, my, my way of looking at things is that the insurance is really the starting point. That's, that, that's making sure the foundation is there to build whatever it is that you're really dreaming. And, and that's really where I like to work with um, entrepreneurs and business owners. And, and whether you're in startup or you're just um, building or you're in growth phase, you know, that's where we sort of look at, okay, what strategies are in place in order to grow? That usually means more sales. Sometimes it's not necessarily sales specific and is more operational, but that's where really my focus is. Very cool. And how long have you been doing this? Well, let's say I've been studying business for 20 years and this goes, and, and I say this because, you know, a lot of the times I'll hear entrepreneurs and they'll talk about their journey saying that they, they started out when they were 12 years old and 13 year old old and they knew they were an entrepreneur. I wouldn't say I was an entrepreneur at that point. I was definitely a student of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. And, and, I, and I love the idea of business and getting into business and breaking it down. And I'll say that, and, and Nicole, just to, just to, I'm going to, I'm answering your question, but I'm going to really just share a little bit of my story at the same time, right? I feel like it's going to do, do, do everything there. So when I was 13, I really wanted a job. And you know what? I, I was looking for a job everywhere. I couldn't get employed, probably because I was too young. And then I found out, yes, you know what? You have to be 14. I got my first job and I was working in fast food and I loved it. And for me, though, what I enjoyed and what I really appreciated was what this business meant. I couldn't, I, I was fascinated by the fact that people that were relatively the same age as me, you know, were able to operate an entire business. And the reason why they were was because there were systems in place and it was really just a matter of operating it. And it was very turnkey. So I was fascinated by the idea that you can actually take anything, turn it into a, a business and it's all a matter of, of having the right model, the right strategy and the right operations. And I'll say that, you know, I worked from one place to another and sort of um, was promoted through the ranks. And then by the time I graduated from university, I'd already spent, you know, over 10 years <laughs> in the fast food industry, um, holding titles as supervisors and corporate trainers and general managers. And I had a lot of fun and, 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 and I enjoyed that. And then what I did was I moved into the, the corporate world and um, I was fortunate again to be put in positions where even though I was working in the banking industry and the insurance industry, I was still able to work with brands as they were starting up, as they were building. And then rather than, you know, helping one franchisee open one store, or one location, now I was in a position to work with, you know, we're talking national financial institutions here, launch national uh, initiatives and multiple branches and brand new business models. And, and I, and I really enjoyed that. And I think that, you know, I spent half of my year, I'll say, um, working with franchisees hands on 
And then after, like the, the next half of my career, the, the next 10 years, I spent in the corporate world um, working in, in, in management and executive levels, working with, with teams. And it was a completely different world for me. But now what I've been able to do is take those two worlds, take the best of everything and the worst, just because those are where we learn, right? And now I'm able to work with more entrepreneurs and startups and help them with the knowledge that I've gained over the years. So really what I do is I understand business. I understand how to put it together and make it work and make things grow and blossom and really bloom. And that's really what I do. That is so cool. I am all about processes and strategies and yes. I love how your brain works and you yes. are always just absorbing that information even as a kid. Yes. Trying Very to cool. always, always, you know what, for me, one of the things that I, I, I really do is I'm committed to learning. And I think that as any strategist, consultant, marketer, whatever you want to call yourself, as long as you're in business, I believe that we really have to be committed to learning. And through that, you know, we really know when we're learning and not just studying, because we have a lot of people out there that are studying. But when you become more of a practitioner and you learn and you learn from your experiences and you do differently and you execute differently, that's when I really can say that, okay, you're definitely learning and you're on the right path. Awesome. And I just want to dig into that. So the listeners really get that. I just want to segue and say, if you didn't get that, hear this, <laughs> there is a difference between studying and learning. And you put it so beautifully. I think a lot of times entrepreneurs, um, especially starting out or when they haven't really got their footing yet, um, they're looking for the answers. And so they're studying and they're studying and they're studying without really implementing anything fully. And I would recommend rather than taking five different programs or, you know, researching or studying or learning five different things at the same time, focus on one at a time, get really clear on it and ask yourself, how can I make this work for me and do it? That's and then it. after you do that, you can add that next thing in. One of the biggest struggles I have when I talk with clients or potential clients, either clients that are starting with me or clients that we're not going to start working together, it's getting them to realize that if they're trying to work with three different coaches on three different uh, ways of doing, of accomplishing the same goal, I, I can't help them. They have to pick, you know, right. and it's not to say that you don't want to work with different people for different things. You do. You want to work with different specialists for different things. You want to learn different um, strategies for different specialties, but then you need to take that information. And as you said, implement it so that, you're doing, you're doing something. You're not just always studying something. Right, right, right. And you know, and oftentimes too, uh, what I find, I, I totally agree with everything you, you just said. We're, we're definitely of the same uh, mindset there. It's, is that um, I, I know that it's scary. Entrepreneurship is scary. The idea is sexy and, and, it, and people love talking about it and they call the, the, the titles thrown out all the time and sometimes even overused to the point where sometimes some people are shy or hesitant to use the, the term or the, the, the title entrepreneur because, I mean, who isn't calling himself an entrepreneur now? But really, the, the entrepreneurs are the doers. And I, I feel, I, I really feel like um, if too much time is spent studying, a lot of the times that's procrastination. And it's really waiting till you'll get to that point where, you know, you want to believe anyways that you're going to be really comfortable once you've mastered it. But true mastery is... I don't know very many masters of anything. I mean, there are a lot of greats, but when, when we're looking at mastery, I would never, you know, any entrepreneur, any, any client that I work with, you know, that, that sets goals of, of mastery, uh, I let them know that's not realistic. And, and I don't really believe that's the right path to success. I mean, really strategic planning should be, you know, milestones that are achievable and it should really just be thinking of growth. And I think that makes everything more believable and because you have to believe it, you know, um, but it, it, it puts things, it makes it a little bit more bite size. And that's when I, I really feel that people are really going to be more likely to dive into it and start, you know, living the, the living the, 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 the path and the, the, the dream of, of real entrepreneurship. And didn't mean to tangent there, but you know what, I, I, I really, uh, I, I really wanted to, to nail that home just because uh, there's so many um, entrepreneurs at, at heart uh, and spirit, but really as far as, you know, hitting the ground, 
that's when it matters and that's when it counts. And you know, it's, you got to start, you got to start. You got to start. And I, I want to dig into that further. I mean, you've got this, you know, for, for our listeners who aren't watching us on YouTube, if you, if you ever want to pop over to YouTube, you can watch this interview in video and you have a beautiful office there. I can see behind <laughs> mine's like not so much, but like mine's okay for me. And I've had, um, you know, I, I work from home. Like this is, this is my office and I'm cool with it. I've had, um, people say both like people who are experts and also clients be like, I can't, the client's going, I can't video yet because I don't have a professional looking backdrop. I don't have a proper backdrop. It's like, no, you just start. Right. You just start. <laughs> and, and I also want to point out, like you are an expert in your field. You rock the stage. Like you've got all kinds of stuff going for you, but this is your first online interview, correct? Absolutely. hundred percent. This is the first time. Thanks, Nicole. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it's like, I, I don't, I, I mean, I can't speak for you. You can speak for yourself, but I can speak for myself when I've been in your shoes and everything. Like people go, oh, wow, you're such a natural and you're so good at this and it's so easy for you. I'm like, hell no. It's, it's scary. It's uncomfortable. It's vulnerable. It's something, yes. you, but I'm willing to always stretch myself, not to a point where it feels wrong. Like if I feel like that gut feeling about something is just not right for me, if I don't trust it, it's always wrong. Yes. But I still want to stretch myself to where I have a little bit of the butterflies because it's like, ooh, growth. Ooh, I'm going to I'm gonna implement. I'm going to learn something for real because we can learn, we can study, as you were saying, you know, in theory, but it's not until we have that experience ourselves, that visceral experience that we actually know what we're doing. For sure. For sure. And I think your office is great. <laughs> I love my little office. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? And just to speak to that too, um, I really believe that, you know, self-awareness and, and really accepting where you are is most important as, as far as um, starting anything. You know, uh, I, I really believe that there are a lot of times when you can say, you know, you're going to wait till you have the right brand, wait till you have the right website, wait till you have X amount of followers on, on Twitter or Instagram or YouTube, whatever the case may be. Um, I, I really believe that everyone has to start. And you know what? Look at where you are assess that, assess who you are rather than some of the things that are around you. Because to be honest, a lot of these things don't matter. You know, I, 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 your office, I mean, it matters to you <laughs> and it might make you feel a little bit better, but at the end of the day, and this is one of the beauties about like, in my, my opinion anyways, about entrepreneurship today, um, because right now it's more value driven than ever before. It's more about what can you do? Like, what can you do? Can you deliver? And it, are you adding value? And, and I really feel that as long as you're in a position where you're ready to say, I'm ready to add value to your organization, people could really care less about where your office is or where you do it. So, you know, for, for anyone who's sort of on the fence or just waiting for, you know, that right moment, that right office space or, you know, that right income level or the right amount of followers, stop waiting for that. You know, it, it's once you're in that space where you can say, you know what, I know my stuff and I'm ready, that's when it's time. Absolutely. And I'll also add that you don't need to know everything in that space. Like just one thing, you right. know, I am working with somebody right now on um, creating content to teach people about how to excel on Twitter. And at first she thought, well, nobody is going to buy this from me to work with them just on Twitter because I need to know all the social media platforms. It's like, no, you don't. I teach about social media, but I'm not an expert in any platform. I'm an expert in strategy. So I can tell you how to build out that strategy to, you know, to do social media, but I can't teach you a specific thing, but somebody else who's a spe who specifically can teach you one thing, like that's perfect. So just like figure out what your one thing is, if it's strategy or if it's an umbrella thing where it's an overview, perfect focus on that. And if it's not, then focus on whatever you know really well, like the back of your hand and build out from there rather than thinking I've got to have more before I can start. Like you're never going to start. For sure. For sure. Totally. Totally. You know what? If you're serious about starting, <laughs> that is, and, and maybe some people, they like the idea of it. And you know, the, the truth is uh, for us that have been there, starting out is tough. And it isn't for everyone. And you know what? That's fair. So, so there are some people who are toying with the idea and maybe one of the reasons why they're on the fence is because maybe it really isn't for them. But Absolutely. there is only one way to find out. <laughs> so you got to do it. 
So let's talk about that a little bit. When you decided to go all in for yes. yourself and on your own, um, what was that like for you? Yeah, that's, a, that's a great question because I always knew the time was going to come. Um, <clears throat> the biggest question was the when. And, and I'll say, and, and I can go back as far as being 18 years old before I even started university. I knew that as soon as I get out of here, I'm going to start something big. Um, the, the truth is at that point, I didn't really know what it was going to be, but I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to have to say that my first attempt was probably in 19, late nineties, 97, 98 ish dot com bubble where there was all, a lot, all the hype around, you know, any dot com. Right. And, um, I had an idea, but my idea wasn't so much to, to build a, a business. My idea was, I was excited about the idea of building a million dollar company and, because so many people were doing it. And, and, and I, you know, being a numbers person, I said, you know what, if I come up with, find a thousand clients and sell, sell, sell a thousand clients, a service or a product for a thousand dollars, I'll get a million dollars and I'll have a million dollar company. But I put sort of that before the actual business and I didn't really know what that business was, but I'll say that was my first itch of saying, okay, you know what, I really want to build something. But that was all wrong because I put the money first and then I put a system first, aiming with a pricing strategy, and I didn't even know what I was going to be selling. Then I, I went to work and throughout uh, while I was working, I knew that I was actually looking at my, my jobs as, as internships. I was really taking in the experience, taking in the knowledge, um, continuing to build my network until I knew that, okay, I, I, I learned that my passion was business. However, as I started to develop further, I realized my real true passion was really helping people. Like my passion really was people. And I really wanted to work more with the people behind these businesses that were building these great businesses. And for me, it was kind of like the best of both worlds, you know? And um, I know that uh, there was one afternoon, I was at work and I was doing a little bit of self-talk. And I knew that I knew that it was coming. My days were numbered. It's just a feeling I had every morning I was driving in my one hour commute to the office. I felt like the day's coming pretty soon. I, I, that day when I resigned is coming pretty soon. And um, that morning, I remember I had a one on one with my, my manager at that time. And, um, you know, he said to me, so what's next for you? And I said, it's going to be my own thing. And uh, that was the day I put in my resignation. And from there on out, all I knew was that I was going to help people build phenomenal businesses with everything that I've learned over the years. And I, I started out and it wasn't easy. It was hard, very hard. But um, you know what? When you're in a place where you know that you're doing what you, you were meant to do and what you feel is right, and things start to, start to kind of come together and really align. And it takes a few years sometimes, but I mean, ever since I set out, I got my first client, first client's a huge win. You celebrate, you, you, you get the second one right when you, you know, you're basically working off that momentum, you pull in the second one, then you get the third. Now you have more to talk about, right? And then from there, uh, um, I still was heavily involved in franchising. Um, I had a partner, we started a first franchise. So I, I, I was sort of involved in the operations, um, supporting the operations, but really heavily involved in trying to grow that. Started a second franchise, got involved in that. And then I, 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 from there, pulled back into my business as far as consulting and then continued to work with, you know, more entrepreneurs along the way. But for me, that moment was, I, it was a scary moment, but I knew it was going to happen. And I knew it was something in the works for almost 10 years. Wow. 10 years. So, I love that you bring that up and even talking about, um, you know, it takes time to even once you know, and once you start, it's not like it happens immediately. It does right. take time and there are really big challenges that come up. And I also really appreciate that you talk about celebrating that first client. Um, I talk about this a lot to people where they go, well, it was only this, you know, I got, I got somebody, but they only bought this. It's like, holy cow, you got somebody. They bought this. Woo! That's right. That's right. Like, That's right. Yeah. Let's party. Exactly. I think the more we celebrate our little accomplishments, the easier the big ones come. If you're not celebrating the good stuff and you're only looking at what's wrong, guess what? You're going to have more of what's wrong and That's more right. and more. That's right. So tell me about, um, how have you found 
what works best for you in dealing with those mind screws or those big challenges that come up along the way when things just seem insurmountable? How do you figure out that they are in fact manageable? Well, you know, I, I start out like, like this. Um, everything is manageable and there's a solution to everything. And a lot of the times, um, entrepreneurship can be very lonely. And uh, like for myself starting up, I didn't start this business with a partner or, and, and, and I didn't start with any employees. I started with me and, you know, sort of everything sort of stopped and ended here. So any problem, anything that came up was me. And I, I think that that gets, I mean, that can be very challenging in itself. But for me, I, I eventually built what, you know, you'll, if you read books like uh, Think and Grow, where they speak of this mastermind, right? And whether it's formal or informal, um, I would say that have your support system, your support network, network, whatever you want to call it, in place and have enough people with enough expertise in enough areas. Because one of the most challenging things in entrepreneurship is not having that, the right support system. And I, I find that, you know, friends and family are great uh, for supporting us because they can be cheerleaders, so even if they don't even know what they're cheering for, even if they don't know if you can even really do it, right? But if we really want to have, you know, people in our corner that actually know what's, what's happening, we need to, to build our networks right from startup phase, knowing that, okay, if a situation like this comes up, who can I speak to? And I feel that once we have that sort of a uh, trusted uh, panel or network in our corners, like for me, that's what really helped me because I, I, I realized that, you know what, uh, it's not really on me. Ultimately it's on me, but I do have some support. And I, I think it's, it's great to have support um, besides just Google. Cause if you rely too much on Google, then you're really doing it yourself. And then you gotta think, okay, should I believe this or should I believe that? So let's just, I will say that it's really knowing that I have a good support system in place. And that's, what's definitely helped me navigate through some of the challenges along the way. Awesome. I love that. And I will say that, you know, it is lonely for a lot of entrepreneurs. And, um, you know, I personally am a very independent and highly motivated go-getter, like in some ways type A, in some ways not. But I was challenged because I don't have family. I was really challenged in um, developing that network. And so that's one of the reasons that I decided to create this membership group called Tough Cookies is so that we have a, I have a, I can offer a place for other entrepreneurs who are similar to me, who are looking for that kind of mastermind. And of course, I teach about uh, Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich and My Mastery Mindset Challenge, which is free if you go to bbrshow.com forward slash challenge. Um, but if you want to take that to the next level and actually have those interactions and you don't have your own uh, community already, I'd love to invite you to come to the Tough Cookies. And you can find out more at bbrshow.com forward slash cookie. So I just wanted to throw that in there because, you know, I've always known the importance of having that foundational support and knowing that you, you need somebody outside of your own brain that can shed light on things and that can provide you with resources that you're not aware of yet. But I also know that sometimes starting out and not having those people around, not knowing where to turn and you look on Google or you start following one guru and then that leads to another and to another and then that leads to what we were talking about before about buying lots of different programs and listening to lots of different people and not really knowing where to focus. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Oh. You know, sorry, I just gotta, I, I gotta pipe in there for a second. When we're just uh, along the lines of the gurus and the experts and because there's so many out there, right? And, and, I, and I really feel like, um, Sometimes when you're starting out, uh, it, it, you have to, and this is so important and so hard at the same time, but you have to figure out who you are, right? And I think one of the challenges sometimes of starting up, and especially because there are so many experts and gurus and, and, and you know, everyone who knows everything out there that, you know, we don't want to look at those when we're starting out as idols, or we don't want to look at those as a model. We don't want to look at those as saying, okay, I need to do these things so I can be just like this person because that's how they had their success. So we need to figure out, okay, what's your path really going to be? So when we look at, you know, these, these experts, we're, we, we really need to, to be able to look at them and, and figure out, okay, what will work for you? And, and I say this because I, I'm very much a realist, right? As optimistic as I am, and I still believe most things, almost anything could happen. Anyone could do anything. And I really do believe that. But I, I feel that within reason. And I believe that anyone could make anything happen, but I don't necessarily know or believe that anyone can necessarily 
do anything. And I say this because uh, as far as being a leader or a manager in your business and really running it, it's a matter of putting your putting the best people in the right, in the best places, right? And it's really, that's how you really optimize whatever it is that you're really trying to, to try, trying to achieve. And I don't believe that everyone is cut out to be a YouTube sensation. Or I don't believe that everyone has what it takes to, to have the hottest Snapchat. And, and, and that's okay. But, you know, it's kind of like to, to what you sort of alluded to earlier. You know, if Twitter's your thing or if this is your thing, that's okay. Find your thing, find your place, find your lane, and just run with that. And, you know, whatever the experts are doing, it might be great for them, may not be great for you. But don't look at that as a model to, to say that, you know what, I need to, I need to do that. I just, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yes, thank you. So let me ask you a couple little questions and then we're going to wrap up. The time is flying right. and I can talk to you all day. Yes. Um, so if you were to travel back in time 10 years, mm -hmm. what would you tell Kari of the past about the future? Okay. And this is a, this, this is a great question because the, 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 the challenge isn't coming up with, okay, what would I really tell me? I'm trying to think of that list and, th and think of what I would put on top. <laughs> but um, of, of the many lessons I, I've learned, I, I'd probably say the most valuable lesson would be to pay attention to yourself, pay attention to your strengths. And a lot of the times, um, you know, especially uh, us super ambitious types, growth types that want to achieve and we're, we're, we're on the high achieving side of things, it's like... Sometimes when we're setting goals, uh, we don't realize that we're not setting ourselves up for the, for the, for the most success. And, um, and, and I would definitely go back and, and, and you know, have that sort of reality check talk with myself. Um, if I could slide one more thing in there, it's really understanding the, the process of goal setting. And um, sometimes we set ourselves up and we feel like we're not successful because we didn't achieve our goals. But really, um, there's a, there's a system and a strategy to goal setting that a lot of the times, you know, without experience, we don't know, you know, um, before I really understood um, how to set uh, achievable uh, milestone goals, you know, I'd set a goal and then I wouldn't achieve it. And I'd be like, like two months into um, achieving this goal and realize, you know what, there's no way I'm going to do that. And I'd either give up or just not want to do it, lose interest, lose focus. But really it's not that the goal, like it was a poor goal. Right. And if, if the goal was set strategically and was realistic, then maybe I wouldn't have lost interest, you know, and, and, and I really would have to say that if I could go back, those are the, the, the top two to, to, to make it two items. Those would be the first thing, like the, the top two things for sure. Awesome. Great, great advice. And what do you do best self-care strategy to keep yourself in peak condition in order to be a rock star entrepreneur. All right. You know, I, I, I think that my commitment, and I'll say this again, my commitment to learning. So I read, um, and whenever I read, I really try to take the time to sort of meditate and reflect on it. And I think that giving ourselves that time, that's when we become more of a, um, uh, again, practitioner, and we're, we're able to execute on, on what we're learning, and we're not just, just studying for the sake of studying. So I definitely say for myself, I, I would say it's that, that commitment to learning and, and, and reading and studying and, and being a, a, a student and then a practitioner second. Brilliant. So with that, how about uh, you let us know how our listeners can connect with you? Absolutely. Uh, website is bloomfieldgroup.ca and my email address, Kari, K-H-A-R-I, at bloomfieldgroup.ca. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Nicole. It's been great. Awesome. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, make sure to subscribe on iTunes so that you don't miss another episode. And if you're just joining us for the first time, welcome. Thanks so much for being here. And if you want to catch up on past episodes, it's super easy to do when you subscribe on iTunes. Also, we're on Stitcher. And of course, you can visit bbrshow.com for all of the episodes, show notes, and more. I would love to hear what you think about today's episode by leaving a review on iTunes, or also you can 
go to bbrshow.com and on our show notes page, there is a comment section. Dear listeners, I do this show for you. So the more you let me know what you love, the more I can bring you that. Don't forget that the Business Building Rockstar Show releases every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So three times per week, you can listen in to what the journey towards rockstar status entrepreneurship is really like. Until next time, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you and I look forward to connecting again real soon. And there you have it. If you enjoyed this episode of the Business Building Rockstar Show, be sure to subscribe on iTunes so you don't miss a thing. And visit bbrshow.com for all the show notes and links to resources discussed on today's show. Plus, lots more.